Hi, I'm Sandy Simpson from uh, Apologetics Coordination Team. This is from an article that I wrote called One of Satan's Final Masquerades. And it's taken from a verse in 2 Corinthians 11.14 that says, And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. You know, Satan often disguises himself with the purpose of deceiving people. And one way in which I believe he's putting on a masquerade is by appearing as Mary to millions of people worldwide. Marian apparitions uh, reportedly began as far back as the 4th century and even allegedly back as early as 40 AD. You know, they were reported a reported uh, 2160 Marian apparitions from the 4th century to the 17th century as you can see by this chart. There have been another 458 apparitions in the 20th century from 1900 to 2011 alone. So the sightings have been increasing. Each year, one million people visit Medjugorje, for instance, and millions of pilgrims visit apparition sites annually. Now I'm going to show you in this document that the, that the apparitions of Mary, quote-unquote, appearing all over the world, are not Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, but likely Satan himself. Remember that the devil can appear as an angel of light, as we just read. What better way to fool people than to show up masquerading as the beloved mother of Jesus Christ with a baby in her arms? You know, following are some of the titles of Mary given by the Catholic and Coptic churches, as well as quotes from the apparitions themselves. And I think you'll find it very interesting. Of note is the fact that this Mary, quote-unquote, is being called, and is calling herself, the morning star, quote-unquote. In your free will, decide for God. Our Lady is our mother and morning star, our guide. And that's from Medjugorje. As the mother of Christ, Mary is the morning star announcing the rising of the sun of righteousness. Like the moon at the dawn of a new day, she is wholly uh, bathed in the glory of the sun that is to come after her. Her beauty is a reflection of his. Also in, uh, in, in the song, it says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so bro uh, strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. You are chosen by the Father, you're chosen of the Son, you're chosen from all women, and for women, shining one, blessed are you among women, blessed in turn our, our, uh, all women too. Blessed they with peaceful spirits, blessed they with gentle hearts. Uh, the Virgin Mary has appeared under and been given a wide variety of titles by the Catholic Church. Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Sorrow, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Our Lady of Angels, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, um, Our Lady of uh, Chekova, Our uh, Lady of Good Counsel, Our Lady of the Snows, Our Lady of Mercy, Our Lady of Grace, Our Lady of Roses, Our Lady of the Rosary, Our Lady of Nock, Our Lady of uh, Morjigori, Our Lady of Loreto, Our Lady of the Assumption, Our Lady Help of Christians, Our Lady of Consultation, Our Lady Star of the Sea, our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, uh, Our Lady Queen of Angels, Our Lady of Refuge, Our Lady of Visitation, Our Lady of the Valley, the Immaculate Conception, uh, Con Conception, Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Peace, Lady of the Rosary, Mother of God, Refuge of Sinners, Queen of All Saints, Morning Star, Tower of David, Mystical Rose, and many more. There are indeed some striking correlations here. In Catholic tradition, the 
Virgin Mary came to be identified with the Morning Star, a title which was previously associated with the archangel Lucifer before his fall from grace. But after the fall of Lucifer from his original glory, the honorific title of Morning Star and the symbolism it conveys would lie dormant until it could be associated with the Blessed Virgin Mary. As the new Morning Star, Our Lady... Uh, uh, thus uh, effectively supplanted Lucifer as the highest being in the angelic order, becoming even greater in stature as the mother of God and queen of heaven. And that is from a Catholic uh, uh, publication uh, about Medjugorje. To celebrate this jubilee year, Friar A. Mit- Uh, Michael, rector of the sanctuary, explains to Asia News, we decided to build a new large church called Morning Star and will uh, will accommodate over 15,000 people. John Paul II called her the star of the new uh, new evangelization. Indeed, Our Lady of Guadalupe is the morning star of the new evangelization which precedes the day of the Lord. But you know, this Mary is not the first and only demigod to bear the title Morning Star. We've got to look back in history and look at some mythology to see that. For instance, Venus has the title of Morning Star from Greek mythology. Nimrod was considered to be the sun and morning star. Hesperus, the evening star, is called by uh, Hesiod, a son of uh, Astraeus and Eos, and was regarded even by the ancients as the same as the morning star, whence both Homer and Hesiod called him the bringer of light. Or precipice crests of mountain wells leapt up uh, broad heaven light, uh, Eosporus, the morning star, who rouseth to their toils and slumber sweet, he binders the sheaf. And the Greek word for star is actually aster, and the same root leads to the uh, name of Astarte. Very interesting. Now, interestingly, even Muslims acknowledge Mary, particularly with reference to the apparitions at Fatima, since that was the name of one of Muhammad's wives. Apparently, the following quote comes from a person who does not understand in the Quran that Allah is said to neither have wife or son, but she says, the bright and morning star Mary, queen of heaven and husband of Allah. Well, let's look at the biblical definition of the morning star. This is a very instructive title where Catholic theologians have stated that Mary got this title from after Lucifer was thrown out of heaven. Now, I need to explain about Lucifer. The translation by Jerome of Lucifer, meaning morning star, is not actually accurate. And I'll read from a commentary on that. God asked Job, where were you when I did laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely, not, surely you know. Or who stretched out the line upon it? To what were its foundations fashioned or fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Job 38, 4-6. This could not mean Adam, who had uh, no sons uh, until after he sinned. This was when the foundations of the earth were being laid, before Adam was made on the sixth day. The angels were together, united as sons of God, before a division occurred through the fall of a certain cherub. So we see that the morning stars are actually a group, and they are called the, the sons of God. Lucifer is not the correct translation of the name. Though it is accepted today, this is not the name drawn from the Bible for Satan before his fall or after. He's actually called the Daystar, uh, Hebrew Ben Sakar, son of the morning, Isaiah 14, 12. Uh, the Hebrew Halel, which means the bright and shining one who spreads light. And this Hebrew noun is found nowhere else. So whether or not you call Satan Lucifer or know that it is not his name in heaven before the fall, the fact of the matter is is that Jesus was given the title Bright and Morning Star after Lucifer was thrown to earth, this title showing that Jesus is greater than the angels. 
There's no mention of uh, Mary being given this title in the Bible, nor was she or is she an angel. Catholic theologians, quote-unquote, try to use the uh, reward for those who overcome in life and in eternal life, and they receive the morning star, Revelation 2.28, which is probably referring to Jesus Christ. They also try to use 2 Peter 1.19, which is also talking about after the resurrection, not now. This reward is for all believers after death, so this Marian apparition cannot exclusively claim this title to itself. But we must, must remember that the enemy was called the morning star or son of the morning before he fell, uh, Isaiah 14, 12, and is under no obligation not to lie about the title still belonging to him. Think about it. The fact that the apparitions of Mary have stated that she is the morning star should be a clue to the identity of this imposter. What better way to fool the world than for the evil one to appear as an angel of light in the form of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is also often, by the way, seen with a baby in her arms. Who's that baby? This baby cannot be Jesus, as he is in his adult, glorified body, sitting at the right hand of the Father, as the God-man for all eternity. And if he's seen in any other way, it's a deception by the enemy. Of course, only Jesus Christ is called the bright and morning star in the Bible, Revelations 22.16. Now, it's also instructive that we need to look briefly at a number of other heretical titles given to this Mary by the Catholic Church. Here's titles given to her. The Virgin, the Virgin Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Mother, Mother of God, Immaculate Mary, uh, Saint Mary, Holy Mary, Vo uh, Holy Virgin, Our Lady, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of Kazan, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Noc, etc. The Madonna, uh, Notre Dame, uh, Queen of Heaven, Maria, Mariam, Marie, Full of Grace, Blessed, Most Blessed, Gratia Plena, Beata, and she's also called the Virgin, Virgo, uh, uh, Parth Parthenos, Cause of Our Salvation, Causa Salutis, um, Advocate of Eve, Advocata Eva, uh, Mater Dei, Mater Te uh, the Theo, God, uh, God Bearer, De Diapra, Diapara, uh, De Gen Degenetrix, uh, Theoticus, um, Ever Virgin, Semper Virgo, uh, Holy Mary, Saint Mary, Sancta Maria, Sancta, Sanctissima, Toda Sancta, Sancta uh, Most Pure, Purissima, uh, Immaculate, Lady, Mistress, Madonna, Regina Cole, Regina Cale, uh, Revelation 12.1. Star of the Sea, Stella Maris, uh, Saint Jerome, Seat of Wisdom, Sadus uh, Sapietai, um, Cause of Our Joy, Ark of the Covenant, Cause of Our Joy, Comforter of the Afflicted, Co-Redemptrix, uh, Destroyer of Heresy, Empress of the World, Mary, Favored Daughter of the Father, Gate of heaven, joy of the just, health of the sick, help of Christians, Holy Mary, Holy Mother of God, Holy Virgin of Virgins, House of Gold, the Immaculate Heart, Mirror of Justice, Mother of the Poor, Mother of the World, Nina uh, Wajombo, uh, Morning Star, Mother uh, Inviolate, uh, Mother Most Admirable, Mother Most uh, Amiable, Mother most chaste, mother most pure, mother of Christ, mother of the divine grace, mother of good counsel, mother of orphans, mother of our creator, mother of our redeemer, mother of perpetual help, mother of sorrows, mother of the sun, mother thrice admirable, uh, mother undefiled, uh, mystical rose, Nova Eva, the new Eve, 
our uh, Lady of Confidence, Tabernacle of the Lord, Temple of the Most Holy Trinity, um, Treasure House of God's Graces, Queen of Angels, Queen of Heaven, Queen of Patriarchs, Queen of Prophets, Queen of Apostles, Queen of uh, Martyrs, Queen of Confessors, Queen of Virgins, Mary, Queen of all Saints, Queen conce Conceived Without Original Sin, Queen of the Most a holy Rosary, Queen of Peace, Ravisher of Hearts, Refuge of Sinners, Seat of Wisdom, Singular Vessel of Devotion, Spiritual Vessel, Mary, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, Star of the Sea, Tower of David, Tower of, the, of Ivory, uh, Mary, United, Uniter of Knots, Vessel of Honor, uh, Virgin Most Prudent, uh, virgin most venerable, virgin most renowned, virgin most powerful, vir virgin most merciful, virgin most faithful. Now, excuse me for mispronouncing some of those words, but can you imagine all of those things being attributed to Mary? I want to deal with some of the more heretical titles given to Mary and spoken of by Marian apparitions also from a biblical perspective. Let's go through these one by one. Mother of God. Though Mary was the mother of God in the sense that she bore Jesus Christ, the Son of God, by the Holy Spirit, where Jesus added humanity onto his divine nature, nature thus becoming the God-man for all eternity, she's not the mother of God in heaven as he is self-existent. That's John 5.26. Immaculate Mary. The true Mary, while she was alive on earth, declared she was a sinner in need of a Savior. Luke uh, 147. Thus she was not immaculate, but a true human being born with a sinful nature. If she had not been a true human, then Jesus could not have died for our sins, because only a blood sacrifice can atone for sin, Hebrew 9.22, and Jesus died once for all to accomplish that, Hebrews 7.27, being both fully human and fully the immaculate, immaculate Son of God. Romans 3.25 Cause of our salvation If they meant that Mary had a part in the salvation plan of God by giving birth to Jesus, that would be true in one sense. But she was not the cause of our salvation. That was the plan of God set forth from the beginning, Ephesians 1.4 What about advocate of Eve? No one would advocate for Eve as she was deceived by the enemy and brought Adam into sin, which has affected all mankind. There was an advocate there that day, however, <laughs> and that was the enemy, advocating for man to join him in the big lie and in hell. Ever virgin. Mary was only a virgin until she gave birth to Jesus. After that, she gave birth to sons and daughters, and there are many references to that in the Bible. What about Star of the Sea? This sounds like a pagan title, and it indeed has pagan origins. Stella Maris, or Sea Star, is the name of uh, Ursa uh, Minoris, or Polaris, the guiding star, or load star, ship star, steering star, um, because it's been used for celestial navigation at sea since in antiquity. The name is applied to Virgin Mary in St. Jerome's Latin translation of the uh, Onomasticon uh, ono by Eusebius of Caesarea, although this is in fact a misnomer based on a translation error. The Hebrew name Miriam, uh, meaning drop of the sea, was translated by St. Jerome into Stilla Maris, but at some later stage a copyist uh, transcribe this into Stella Maris, and this transcription error became widespread. You know, there have been many false gods ascribed to be the god of the pole star, such as, for instance, Amano Monokanushi of Japan, uh, who was given that title by the Japanese, and then uh, Daniel Kukawa came along and called him the uh, uh, God in the center of heaven, which is not what he was called. He was called God of the Pole Star. You know, Mary is not the God of the Pole Star, nor is YHWH. What about Ark of the Covenant? Nowhere in the Bible does it link Mary to the Ark of the Covenant, since she came long after the Mosaic Covenant. 
though she participated in God's plan to establish the new covenant in Jesus Christ. But she's not the ark. Co-redemptrix. This is a blasphemous statement about Mary as only Jesus Christ can save. John 14, 6. Salvation is by grace alone, solo gratia, through faith alone, solo fide, in Christ alone, solo Christus. Destroyer of heresy? <clears throat> As mentioned above, the belief that Mary can forgive sins is heresy. <clears throat> Therefore, this cultic following of Mary is the very definition of heresy, which the apparitions of this demon have failed to correct. Gate of heaven. There's only one reference to the gate of heaven in the Bible, and that's Genesis 28, 17, which was an ex exclamation of Jacob when he dreamt a stairway to heaven. There's no correlation to Mary to be found in this or any other passage of the Bible. What about the Immaculate Heart? Well, it's the same thing as uh, Mary being immaculate. It's just untrue. She was not. Mother of our Creator. Again, uh, look at uh, what I already said about Mother of God. God has no mother. He's self-existent. John 5, 26. Queen of Angels. You know, Mary cannot be a queen of angel because, angels because she's not an angel. But Satan could be the, claim to be the queen of angels because he was one of the head angels before he sinned and fell. Think about it. Queen of heaven. You know, there is a queen of heaven mentioned in the Bible, and it's referred to, uh, which is referring to Asherah, wife of one of the Baals, a continuation, by the way, of the worship of Nimrod and Semiramis. Asherah, or Astarte, is identified as the consort of the Sumerian god Anu and the um, Ugartic, Ugaritic El, uh, not, the El uh, not the true god, but the false god El, the oldest deities of their respective pantheons. The worship of the Queen of Heaven was not a good thing, according to the Bible, but it was a cause of anger from God. Jeremiah 7.18, the children gather wood, the fathers light the fire, and the women knead the dough and make cakes to offer to the Queen of Heaven. They pour out drink offerings to other gods to arouse my anger. Jeremiah 44.17, we will certainly do everything he, we said we would. We will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and will pour out drink offerings to her, just as we and our ancestors and our kings and our officials did in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. At that time we had plenty of food and we were well off and suffered no harm. This is the rebellious Israel talking. Jeremiah 44, 18. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had nothing and have been perishing by sword and famine. Jeremiah 44, 19. The woman added, when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did not our husbands know that we were making cakes and impressed with her image and pouring out drink offerings to her? And finally, also mentioned in Jeremiah 44.25, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, You and your wives have done what you have said and you would not uh, 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 said you would do when you promised we will certainly carry out the vows we've made to burn incense and pour out drink offerings to the queen of heaven go ahead then do what you promise keep your vows god put them under judgment for that queen conceived without her original sin mary was not a queen nor was she conceived without original sin this is another damnable lie without any biblical support Ravisher of hearts. I don't know what this title means, but it uh, sounds kind of sinister to me. God did not ravish the hearts of men, nor would his servants. It's the devil who wants to call, cause people to fall in love with him, which he is doing by means of these worldwide apparitions. Refuge of sinners. Mary's not a refuge of sinners, as she is long dead and awaiting glorification with the believers on the day of resurrection. By the way, to worship Mary, to pray to Mary, is necromancy. Because you can't talk to someone from beyond. If you try to do that, what happens? A demon comes in its place and fools people. 
The Psalms often speak of God being our refuge, but there's no mention of Mary being our refuge anywhere in the Bible. Seed of Wisdom Mary was an ordinary person who was chosen by God to bear his, his son. She's actually not a good model of wisdom to follow because she did not recognize who Jesus really was for a long time, as evidenced when she wanted to interrupt his ministry along with his brothers, Mark 3, 31-34. Jesus had to tell his mother off, basically, in front of everyone. You know, there's also not reference to the, a seed of wisdom in the Bible. Finally, Tower of David. There's nowhere that Mary is mentioned as a Tower of David. This phrase is only used once in the Song of Songs, 4-4, where it is an allegory of the relationship of Israel to God and the church to Christ. It's not doesn't belong to Mary. All right, let's move on to specific messages from Marian apparitions. First, from Medjugorje. When you come to love yourselves, you will also love others. In them you will see my Son and recognize the greatness of his love. Live in faith. Through me, my Son is preparing you for the works which he desires to do through you, works through which he desires to be glorified. Give him thanks. First of all, Mary is giving the same kind of psychobabble advice that Oprah Winfrey, uh, Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, o Joel Osteen, and others have popularized but is in direct opposition to what the Bible teaches. We are not called by God to learn to love ourselves, which is what we know how to do better than anything already, but to learn to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves, Luke 10, 27. And to take up our cross daily, denying self, following Christ, not Mary. Luke 9, 23 says, uh, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Secondly, a person cannot recognize the Son in unbelievers, only if they are a believer and have the unity of the Spirit through the Gospel. This is a fallacious teaching by people like Tony Campolo, for instance. Thirdly, the Son is not preparing Christians to do works through Mary, but through Jesus Christ, prepared by the Father. Ephesians 2.10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. As individuals, my children, you cannot stop the evil that wants to begin to rule in this world and destroy it. But according to God's will, altogether, with my son, you can change everything and heal the world. I call you to pray with all your heart for your shepherds, because my son chose them. Thank you. She's getting people to pray to her. Satan already has the rule of this world. And this is a great deception and another reason why I believe these apparitions are from Satan. Let's take a look at that. Luke 4, 5 through 8. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It's been given to me. And I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You know, notice that Jesus did not correct Satan, but rebuked him from the written word. Uh, Satan told part of the truth. He had been given the kingdoms of the world. However, he could not give them back to God. There are other places they talk about satanic dom dominion in the world. Colossians 1.13 For he has rescued us from the begin uh, dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Those who are truly born again have been rescued spiritually from the dominion of the enemy, but they uh, still live here in body and soul in a world that's been given to the de devil temporarily. Christians <clears throat> will never heal the world but can preach the gospel and disciple believers from all nations in order to prepare for Christ's physical kingdom in the millennium. This is important. This apparition goes on to say, I am your mother and cannot leave you alone in wandering in sin. 
You are called, little children, to be my children, my beloved children, so I can present you all to my son. You know, we're not called to become children of Mary, but of Jesus Christ through the new birth. John 1.12 Yet to all who did, not re who, who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Galatians 3.26 So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. 1 John 3.1 See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that's what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. That this Mary, who is not really Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, whose spirit is with the Father in paradise and not roaming the earth holding some child that she calls Jesus, would draw followers to herself, shows that she is none other than Satan, who long ago was thrown out of heaven by trying to get angels to worship him. That's his modus operandi. Isaiah 14, 13 through 15. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost mount, uh, heights of, the mount, of Mount Zaphon. I will uh, ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead to the depths of the pit. This apparition goes on, Dear children, with joy, also today I call you to open your hearts and listen to my call. Uh, anew, I desire to draw you closer to my immaculate heart, where you will find refuge and peace. Not only do her followers repeat the lie of Mary not being a sinner, but the apparition does the same thing. It goes on to say, Our Lady came with a little Jesus in our arms, and she did not give a message, but little, but little Jesus began to speak and said, I am your peace, live, live my commandments. With the sign of the cross, <laughs> Our Lady and the little uh, Jesus blessed us together. Oh, they're doing the sign of the cross from heaven now. You know, this little quote-unquote Jesus speaks and goes against his own teachings that are no longer held uh, that we are no longer held captive to the law of Moses, but are now under the law of Christ, which is love. He also allegedly makes the Catholic sign of the cross, which is a sign that was taken from Babylon, Babylonian worship, actually, when the Catholic, Catholic religion was first syncretized in the 3rd century. Uh, here's what it says about that. The Catholic sign of the cross originated in Babylon as a grand charm before prayer which drew the initial of, not of God, not of the cross, but the name of Tammuz, uh, uh, Tau or T. This same T can be found in the garments of Catholic priests. The Vestal Virgins of pagan Rome and the nuns of Catholicism wore it on their necklaces. Bacchus wore a headband covered with crosses. The Buddhists wear them today. The cross was considered a divine tree, the tree of the gods, the tree of life and, and knowledge, the product of whatever is good and desirable. In Catholicism, the cross is also called the tree of life. Uh, Hail, O cross, triumphant wood, true salvation of the world. It is viewed as the only hope to increase righteousness and pardon offenses. Tammuz used the mistletoe tree to heal the sick. When Constantine came, came along, he declared... Uh, popularized the X for Christ instead of the T for the cross. So again, both Christians and pagans were satisfied. This is called syncretism. Now let's look at some further quotes from different places from this apparition. Quote, I, Mary, alone am able still to save you from the calamities which approach. Those who place their confidence in me will be saved. And that's from the apparition of Akita, which was fully approved by the Catholic Church. But only Jesus Christ is able to save, not Mary. Acts 4.12, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Here's another quote. You have seen, uh, you have seen hell where the so souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart. If what I say 
to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. And that's from the apparition at Fatima, also fully approved by the Catholic Church. This apparition is saying God said something that he never said. God's provision of salvation does not include devotion to Mary, who never was our salvation. Another quote, My daughter, in this time, I am the ark for all your brethren. I am the ark of peace. I am the ark of salvation, the ark where my children must enter if they wish to live in the kingdom of God. And that's from Our Lady of San Nicholas. And this was approved by bishops and many Catholics. But Mary is not the way to salvation, only Jesus Christ, John 14, 6. The fact that this apparition is going directly against the Bible and what it teaches and the gospel proves that it's a seducing spirit teaching doctrines of demons, 1 Timothy 4, 1. Another quote, I call upon you to open yourselves completely to me so that through each of you I may be enabled to convert and save the world. That's Medjugorje. And this is not officially church approved, but it was endorsed by dozens of cardinals, bishops, and the Pope himself. <clears throat> but you know what? God does not ask people to open themselves completely to him, but to believe and commit to his son. It's the devil who wants people to give him a foothold, that's Ephesians 4.27, by opening themselves to him. Finally, there are the words of this apparition itself at Medjugorje. Listen to these. I am the morning star of your Lord. I am the morning star above your journey of this second advent. I have come speaking to humanity as the morning star over America to teach you right from wrong, to wake you from your uh, paranoia coma of indifference against the kingdom of eternal love. Wow. I think this apparition has shown itself to be what it is. So in conclusion, the above information leads me to the conclusion that not only is the real Mary Mother of God not appearing all over the world, but the devil is deceiving millions with this apparition. And I believe, uh, you know, and, and uh, I believe that God always provides those believers who have discernment clues as to what the devil is doing. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11 uh, uh, says we are not unaware uh, of his schemes. God doesn't want to leave us unaware of what the enemy is doing. Well, I'm trying to make you aware of this right now. We have another masquerade of Satan going on all over the world that is fooling people and taking them away from Jesus Christ. <laughs>